Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle video tutorial on Photoshop and the count tool. Maybe one of the more obscure tools, but one that's quite useful for if you want to add some numbers to your various images. If you've got maybe a document or something, you want to particular put one on it, two, three, across that image sort of reference codes, so you've got down the side, maybe one means this, two means this, and you can put, or maybe one is blue and two is purple, and so on so on. You can put numbers on your thing. Now this is only in PSD documents, but well, there might be other formats that it saves it with. However, as far as I'm aware, it's only the standard Photoshop documents that will store it, because that will be stored with the document. It is not stored on the image. So if I go over here to File, and let's just go to export and you go here save for web you notice it's not there it doesn't store the actual numbers in a jpeg file which is a pity it doesn't do that it would be nice if you could flatten it it is not an object you can flatten there's nothing there as far as photoshop's concerned in terms of the visual image however let's just go back to the count tool itself so count tool where is the count tool for the start and that's just go over here and you can edit your toolbar because Maybe, like me, you don't always particularly have the count tool available. Store it away in an extra section. You can go down to those dots at the bottom and you can edit toolbar. And then you'll find it probably in here. And then you can drag it over. And I've just dragged it over and here it is, count tool. You can also find it via, I think it looks like an L there. The L is the one that you can use. However, what do you do with it? Well, you can just simply go over, let's just select it. Now you get some... There's some options along the top here, and you'll notice there's a little count there, zero. There's also some presets as well. You can set a preset, I'm certain it's of use, but however, you've got marker size, label size, and color, and as well as groups, you can group them. So let's just go through, what you see is a plus on there. One plus, click there. It doesn't change, it doesn't go to two for the next one, but you can then go click again, three, and maybe you could go like here, and you want to put four, five, and six, you want to put seven, eight, nine, and you can go up. I don't know if there's a limit. Maybe there's a limit up at 14, 400. I'm not certain, no idea. I've never found a limit. It's never said, nope, can't do any more. But you can add all those, and that's all in count group one, and it's all set with the black color. What I can do, go up here and change color. So maybe I decide, you know what, I want them all to be red. Because I decided red is gonna be a better color for this, all red. Also, I think, you know what? The dots and the sizes, I don't like that size dot. Let's go for four, a bit smaller. So I can reduce the size, and you can see that remove the marker size. That's what it is, the marker size. Or dot size, I would have called it dot size, but it's marker, apparently. And you've got label size. And you might think, you know what? That's a bit obtrusive. Maybe I want um, 10 for the size. So you make it very tiny. Maybe that's a bit too tiny, but but you can see you can change it. You can only go up to 40, 40 is the max. I don't know why 40 was set as the maximum. Maybe you've got a huge document, maybe you covered the whole screen and uh, you know, you've got a really massive screen. You know, I think uh, 40 is a bit too small personally. However, since you can't store it with the document, it's probably irrelevant in that respect. So you can add all these, but what you can do, you've got a count group over here. So you've got a count group here and you can rename it so you don't have to keep, call it count group one. You might have, maybe you could call it, I don't know, uh, maybe because you've got pictures of cats on here and you've labeled them all. You could turn around and say, oh, this is the cat group. Obviously I haven't, I've got squares, but uh, you, you could. Might be pop groups, who knows? So you've got that, their count cat group now. Well, what you can do, you can remove them as well. No, they're not removed, they're just not visible. So you can bring back. You can also clear them all. So if you want to, you can clear the lot just by clicking clear, and that will clear just that group. That's the key thing. So it's all group based. Everything here is group based. Now, if you want to delete, you think, oh, crumbs. Don't want that one there, number 12. And you'll see if you go over it and you hold down the alter option key, if you hover over, it should go minus. Sometimes it doesn't, but it should go minus. And you can click on it and it will remove it. And you can see, oh, that one doesn't look good either. Oh, that one doesn't look good. And you can just remove them. However, notice an odd issue. If you go outside and you put one outside, that doesn't seem to work. You can't hover over and then get rid of it. I don't know why, but it doesn't seem to work. It's a minor issue. But uh, however, let's go and create another group. So also you can move them. So say you click there and you think, oh no, 
that's not where I want it. However, you hover over there and you can see what happens. It doesn't go plus anymore. So it's not plus, nor is it minus, luckily. What you can do, you can select it. Now, theoretically, yep, you just sort of move, just slightly. It's not the quickest. There's quite a bit of a, a delay. It's like, really has to think about moving it. So it's a bit sluggish, I found, personally. Seems to, maybe on your machine it might be quicker. I don't know. But on that one, it does seem when I try and drag it, not particularly easy. So let's just go and add another group. So you've got another group here and you can click here. Count group two, and I call that dogs. Dog group, let's call it a dog group. So you've got dog group. And I'm gonna go with, well, you know what? I don't want to, obviously I've got, I've got loads of dogs in this picture or whatever, but I don't want it in red. And I want the count to start back at one again. You can't unfortunately set it to zero or minus five. It'd be nice if you could, but there doesn't seem to be an option. It just goes one, two, three. It doesn't go A, B, C either. It would be nice. Or some other, you know, sort of reference. Well, what you can do, you can go over here and you can change the colour. Now, that doesn't change it for the other, the other group. All the other group, that's still red. But for group two, the dog group, that's now black. And you've got marker size. And you can turn around and say, you know what? I want that to be 10. And I want that one to be 35. I don't know. Just make it up. And then I can click on there. And you can see then, you know, there might be lots of dogs or elephants or giraffes or whatever. Whatever you've got in that location. And you're marking them on here as. And then you can see you can just quickly add them all like that. And you've got some reference numbers. And that's separate from the group one or the cat group. And you can also clear the whole group. And it doesn't remove the other one. So I think, oh, no, I've done all wrong. Clear. So I can remove them, then I can add them back again. So you can quickly do that. And also you can, there's another one there as well. <laughs> I'm not certain why you've got clear and a delete. Hmm. Strange, so you think it, only one was particularly, I need to just know yourself, so you think, well, there's clear. Why would you need to delete therefore? Anyway, but so, oh, I'm back into group one again. Ah, oh, that just deletes the group, doesn't it? That helps. That is the difference. That deletes the group. That just clears, that doesn't remove the group. There is a difference, a subtle difference, but a difference. But it just seems a bit odd having there. Okay, so just add it again. Count group, do dog group. That's something you'd be aware of, that if you're deleting the, the group, I suddenly might have thought, oh, that's strange, why have you got that there? So that just deletes the group, doesn't delete the, well, it does obviously delete those as well at the same time, but clear, doesn't delete the group, <laughs> cleared. However, now, so you've got your numbers there and again, you can still move them and you can always go and add another group if you want. However, you can see an obvious issue with this. Well, there is a slight issue. If you say you want them uh, in a nice grid, it's quite tricky actually to, uh, it's got a sh the shift key, supposedly, I did read somewhere that the shift key works. However, it doesn't seem to do a particularly great job of alignment. So if you want to, I'm just going to clear those again and I'm going to go, let's delete them, delete that group. And I've got the cat group and I'm going to clear that group. Because what you can do, you can then go to view and you can go down here to new guide layout. You don't have to do it this way, but this is the way I found to do it. And I just create a grid or guides, I should say. You could use, of course, grids as well or rulers, or whatever. You could use various things. Oh, you could use lines. You don't have to, because you could just go over the rectangle tool and create lines and then just add on top of that. If that's what you want. So you've got there, and I'm just going to go for the intersection there. We've got the uh, there, and I can simply click on there. And then, of course, what you can see, it's also you can go across in a line if you want it across in a line. And you can just quickly create like that. So one, two, three, four, five. And then, of course, what you can do, you can always go and add a new group and then change the colour, and then you go across there, and you can see you can do that, like that. And of course, what you can also do if you want to, you can of course do the whole thing. So you can just go there, 12, 13, and you don't have to click obviously the intersection, but it's just a nice reference. So if you want to, you've got to think, you know, I want in the centre. So you can always click in the centre of that if you want. Or you could just change the, obviously the guides to be slightly different. So you can see, you can use that, to make it a little bit more sort of uniform design if you want those numbers. Now, another thing you can do, 
and a view and let's clear the guides now so i've got all these things and you think well what i also want are the numbers i want them to be stored i'm really not certain of a particularly easy way to do it i mean obviously the most obvious way to do it is to do a screen capture but that's not brilliant but that's unfortunately unless there is some feature that i'm unaware of there is no way of freezing that and put it into the document and i would love to see that i don't see a reason why there wasn't an option for that but there isn't but you think it would well, you got it and you think you know what i want to flatten it now i want to flatten it have the lot so that if you go to layer there is nothing to flatten you can't turn them into smart objects convert to smart objects well there's nothing there so if you go to layers there's nothing to convert so what you can do just screen capture Obviously, whatever the screen capture on my, I've got obviously command, control, shift, and four. <laughs> just about remember that now. And you bring up there, and then you can just quickly capture the screen. And let's say it's not ideal because you can see the problem. But you can go and say, like, new document and create. And you can, you've got it saved. And then, of course, once you've done that, you can obviously go and print it or export it with all those images. That's a, a quick workaround on that. But it's not particularly brilliant and of course you can then once you've got that of course you've got all your numbers across the screen so it's a quick and easy way of creating numbers across the screen and you can always of course then go to filters and maybe blur gaussian blur and you can then of course apply blur effects to your counts if you wanted to do that <laughs> i doubt it however hope you found this tutorial of interest always adding new tutorials about photoshop all the time illustrator affinity photo many other applications as well. Also, if you've got any comments, also how you use the count tool, how you think you might use the count tool, please put those in the comments as well, because I'd be really interested to know what sort of things that there's the potential for this tool. Because, you know, obviously I've got my uses, but how do other people use it? Maybe, maybe no one uses it at all. I don't know. It's one of those sort of things you think, who knows? However, there are quite a number of tutorials on it. So I guess there must be some sort of uh, interest in terms of the count tool. And like I say it does have some uses because I have used it in some of my things. I do put like numbers on things and I think, you know, that's great. So I can just store a thing saying, that's a, this is that bit of information. Because you might have come back to a thing later and you think, well, what's that? Oh, after I do that, I think, hmm. You know, and by putting numbers on it and you can put a reference to it, you can put notes and all those sort of things. You can just make the store away and you can think, oh, yes, that's what that meant at that time. Also, a dislike or like. Always appreciate it either way. Thank you much.